theme of our service tonight has been Emmanuel, God with us. I'd like to ask you to say that out loud with me. Can you say that out loud? Emmanuel, God with us. In Isaiah, we see that the um, angel or the prophet is prophesying. He is saying, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. And here's the sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. 700 years before Jesus would be born, this, sign is, this prophecy is made and the whole nation of Israel is waiting. When will this happen? What does this exactly mean? Where and who will he be? You know, Marcy and I were talking about this week how sometimes you watch a movie or you read a novel. How many of you read novels? Some of you read novels. A lot of you. There's very few of you compared to what it used to be, I think. But we, we've allowed movie watching to replace novel reading. But there's sometimes you watch uh, or you read a novel or you watch a story. And the story is a good story. Maybe it's written well. And, and sometimes the story takes a dramatic turn in a way that you didn't expect. By the way, that's not Hallmark. I mean, okay, I know some of y'all love Mar Marcy loves Hallmark, and you know, that, that's not what we're, we're not talking about the melodramatic, you know, whatever. But the, the story goes, and it takes a turn that you didn't see coming. And very often, that part of the story gets you, and it gets your attention, and you're amazed. And, and if you're like me, I kind of I kinda like the things that I didn't expect in this. Well, not a fictitious story, but in the real story of Christmas, God's grand plan takes a turn that no one saw coming. It takes a turn that didn't make any sense to the people of his day. This promised Messiah that would come, he's not going to come in on a, on a big white horse shining, riding in out of the heavens and down into the paths of Rome and into the city commerce of Athens and everything else to conquer the world in that way. No, he came to a little less known, not known town of Bethlehem in a little town, in, in a little nation that no one had very much use for. And he came to live with his people. And he came not being born in a palace, but being born in the most humble of the circumstances. And yet here he is, king of kings and lord of lords. Now, I've been thinking about this a little bit, and I want you to see some images. You know, we, we often think of very powerful people. We think of majesty and royalty. Now, who lives in this house as, as who's the office that lives in this house? The president, right? This is the White House, right? And notice this, I mean, you, you think about these, these people that have been there, how powerful they are. Can you just walk into the White House? No, in fact, all of these men, uh, most of their life were pretty inaccessible, but they were very, very powerful. Now, if we wanted to jump across the pond, we could see who lives in this house. Do you know who lives in this house? That's Windsor. That's the Queen of England. The beauty and the majesty of this place. I mean, you have to look at this picture. Look at their living room. I mean, it looks like something out of heaven. Look at their dining room and their throne room. I mean, it, it's all, look at their Christmas tree. The royalty and the majesty of Queen Elizabeth now reigning for many, many decades. I can't even remember how long. But here she is, and I guess my question is, you kind of see some of these pictures of her. Um, does, can anybody just go up and hug her and talk to her and visit with her and say, hey, let's do, let's do coffee this week? You know, you just, you just don't do that. Now, we could be a little confused with the present crown series that's on. That, that, that's not Elizabeth. That's, it, it, but, it, but it is interesting to me, and I show this because... We're very interested in royalty. We're very interested in power and fame and majesty. 
We're awed by it and amazed by it. In fact, there's other royalty that we have, maybe not presidents and maybe not kings and queens, but business and entertainment. I mean, Matt Damon lives down in Miami, but I doubt any of you just swing by and, you know, get a Coke with him or have a cup of coffee with him. Jeff Bezos comes here on a regular basis, as does Bill Gates, but I doubt that any of you hang out with him just at the, on the whim. Steven Spielberg's yacht is often stationed here in Fort Lauderdale. And yet, even with them being close by here, we don't see them. We don't run into them in the mall. You see, one of the amazing things, and go on to the next one there, one of the amazing things about the powerful and the wealth and the, the affluent and those with great status they're very removed from us. Have you noticed that? In fact, they live behind gates and they live behind walls. And if you climb the gate, this is what happens. The Capitol Police come after you. And we see that the great powers of humanity tend to be very separated from the people. Even Buckingham Palace has, is known for the guard that stays there and the changing of the guard and all that is there. It is this great isolation from power and royalty. The amazing thing about God is that he does just the opposite of humans. God says, I am with you. I come to live within you. I am yours. I am, not, I am not high and exalted in my heaven with you having no access to me. God says, I made you because I love you and I want you to be with me and I want to be with you. And he says, let me show you how much I mean that. And he comes to be born as a human in the most humble of circumstances, you think about it with me, he wasn't born in Rome, where the emperor was. He wasn't born in the great philosophical center of Athens. He wasn't even born in Jerusalem. Where was he born? Bethlehem, a little tiny town made up of shepherds and simple commerce people. And he says, I want to be with you. This is the message of God throughout the Bible, that he wants to be with his people. I want to encourage you this Christmas to recognize what his name really means. Look what it says there in Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself will call you, give you a sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. Go to the next one that is there. And I want you to see that he says, as he says that, his name means, and it's on the front of your program and on our main title slide, the th it means God with us. This is the picture. God says, I am with you. Now, this Christmas, I invite you to recognize that that's the meaning of Christmas. That God says that he comes, he lives his life, he's crucified on the cross, he dies in our place for our sins. And he says this in John 1, but as many as received them, to them he gave the right to become children of God. How close are children? You want your children with you. This is the great meaning of Christmas. Amen? Let's pray together.